Laylee, what's your favorite movie? No, Chloe. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> You're doing it the wrong way. What is the right way? You, we say all this and then we go to... Ah, gotcha. Okay. You're listening to The Daily Brew from the Stanford Daily. This is Chloe Burrow and Laylee Resvani. In this episode, we discuss the state of the humanities. Chloe, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Her. What about you, Laylee? Um, Dead Poets Society. I've seen it 23 times. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Who knows where that comes from? What are the humanities? The humanities examines fundamental questions that can never be answered, that people past and present have to consider over and over, studying thinkers from Aristotle to Zhuangzi. Humanists have traditionally been the soul of a university, the heart of what keeps intellectual inquiry alive in a corporate wasteland. Why do you use complicated language to talk about things that, you know, are everyday occurrences? Or why do you, uh, or why does history keep changing? Why is the, the account of, of uh, you know, why is the, the explanation for the Civil War change over time? Why, why don't you settle on, a, on an explanation for a historical event and just leave it there? That was Professor Roland Green, who is the director of the Stanford Humanities Center. He is a former president of MLA and SLE and has spent 19 years here at Stanford. Currently, he is a professor of English and comparative literature. Green argues that the purpose of the humanities is not to answer questions, but rather to define the questions themselves. One thing is that this institution in recent years has often represented itself as existing for the purposes of solving problems. That is, it exists to solve problems in society, either through technological solutions or something like that. Uh, And um, in that environment, it does become a challenge for people in the humanities to represent what we do because we don't solve problems. We, We identify problems, we reframe problems, we um, we give historical context to problems, um, lest people think that the problems of the present have never existed before. Perhaps this problem of representation could be the reason why some students think the humanities are undervalued and overlooked. The school just kind of like puts so much more pressure on like the non-humanities, like for instance, like the career fair here like last week was just like so anti-humanities and theme was literally like advertising where like consulting and CS things were. Professor Green thinks this affliction is not unique to Stanford. Stanford is actually not as different from similar institutions in this respect as we think it is. You know, the percentage of humanities majors at Harvard is very close to that at Stanford. This problem is sort of everywhere in, the, in, in our society right now. It's the question of how, at the undergraduate level, how to represent what humanists do in a way that makes uh, the undergraduate population feel that this is something they need to know, they need to participate in, that they can, that they can major in, that they want to, might want to devote a significant part of their lives to this. Some students say this problem extends to a lack of community for humanities students. I think community is actually a little bit difficult. Like, I've been in some clubs and stuff, like, I was in the Film Society last year, but I remember I was even walking around clubs, the activities fair the other day, and I was like, wow, there's a lot of things if you want to, like, go into business and, like, mm-hmm. do this, like, engineering thing, you know, or you can make that thing with that club. But because humanities is often more, a little bit more, like, intellectual and less, like, production it's almost hard to make like a a club it's definitely not the same plethora as there is for like every cs every variation of cs club i do a lot of kind of work on my own just writing so i wouldn't i mean i'd say kind of like the only challenge is really finding outlets for me to share it i wouldn't say that there are a ton of publications out there that do specifically kind of like create literary fiction or poetry or stuff like that We asked Professor Green what he thought about the lack of organized spaces on campus. I think this this does go to one of our, um, one of the things that we need to think about doing a little better, which is creating more, more as you say, organized spaces for, let's say, for undergraduates who are interested in the humanities. 
Even if Stanford still has work to do in creating community for humanity students, both Professor Green and students agreed that professors are one of the best resources on this campus. I found the humanities department to be unmatched in terms of its professors and class options and just overall resources. Um, so as a history major, I definitely have no complaints about the humanities. Don't underestimate the function of professors in this. To go, if a student came to me and said, I feel underprepared for what we're talking about in this class, I've never heard of these things before, where do I go, how do I start, what do I, where do I, what do I need to know? That's music to my ears, you know, that's what we're here for. I'm taking a class on um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. right now, and we have a whole King Institute just filled with his papers um, given to Professor Carson by Coretta Scott King. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying my class right now this quarter um, with Marcy Kwan. It's Asian American art, and she just speaks so eloquently, and it, like, it's a welcome shift. Um, compared to like listening to CS professors talk about the intricacies of uh, neural networks and all of that. With such exceptional professors and resources, it's hard to see why students here wouldn't take more humanities classes. A lot of times people either don't have the time to take uh, really interesting, thought-provoking humanities classes, or they just kind of write it off because they would rather take another tech class. This oversight is not lost on humanities scholars, who often feel the need to justify their work because the questions they study are immediate enough to be discussed by everyday people. But I think the answer, uh, the specific answers change from era to era and for, from generation to generation, but certain things remain constant. From the point of view of, a, of an institution, the role of the humanities in the c conversation that's going on right now. That role is to contribute advanced thinking on complicated issues involving history, society, culture, in the broadest sense. Some students, however, say they were discouraged from pursuing such advanced thinking because those from under-resourced backgrounds often lack the vital context needed to understand works in the humanities. Professor Green experienced this firsthand as he himself was a first-generation college student at Brown University. The first, I don't know, couple of weeks, I was kind of bowled over by how many things that the, the other freshmen in my courses already knew about that went completely over my head. To make up for his gap in knowledge, Professor Green professor used the library to read up on subjects he hadn't heard of before. So I, I've sort of created a whole parallel curriculum for myself of things that were not on any syllabus, but that were context for what we needed to know. We have things on campus that are explicitly designed to help you with this kind of question that you're posing. At the end of the day, humanities students are all around us. We can find them browsing in the library stacks and reading on Myron Green, proud to take the road less traveled. Many of these students experience a sense of fulfillment by joining the elect who don't go to 600-person lectures and take part in peace at culture. They are all too happy to join the rebellion of nuances and words. I've always wanted to feel special, and being a humanities student sometimes makes me feel special because I feel like the odd duck out, but in the best way. I, I'm proud of the fact that I'm a humanities student because I feel like I'm part of a, like, a resistance of some kind, a resistance to like, this text, you know, Silicon Valley culture and this pressure to do something with a direct like, practical application. I appreciate having a different outlook, and I appreciate that other people appreciate that. Humanists are a special rebellious breed, people who think differently, who aspire to be new by studying the old. Some are there to uncover the secrets of the ages, some are there to learn about the world, and maybe others are just there to find themselves. But wherever the wind of freedom blows, the humanities will always be in the air. This episode was produced by Chloe Burrow, Laylee Razvani, Ellie Wong, and Alex Wong. To hear from other Stanford Daily podcasts, go to stanforddaily.com slash podcasts.
僕の心に灯されていた優しい明かりはあなたがくれた理由なき愛の証柔らかな火だまりが包む背中にぽつり話しかけながらいつかこんな日が来ることもきっときっときっと分かってたはず。そうに咲きそうなつぼみが今年も僕を待ってる手のひらじゃつかめない風に踊る花びら立ち止まる方に以来夜空に乗せて。笑顔の